Welcome in, Hokie Nation, to this week's edition of the Tech Sideline Podcast. The Virginia Tech women's basketball team continues to make history as they earn the one seed in the Seattle Three region of the NCAA tournament and will host the first and second round right here in Blacksburg. The men's basketball team is headed to Cincinnati for the first round of the NIT, and we have some developing news on the Virginia Tech football coaching staff. That's coming up right here on episode 288 of the Tech Sideline Podcast. Let's get things going right now. We record on Monday, March 13th, 2023 from our high tech studio at the Virginia Tech Corporate Research Center right here in Blacksburg, Virginia. We welcome you in, whether you're listening on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you consume your podcasts, or if you're watching on YouTube. If you do happen to be over on YouTube, make sure to like and subscribe while you're there, and also turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any future TSL content. Tech Sideline is presented by Triumph NIL this week, or excuse me, that first is First Bank uh, and Trust Company. First Bank and Trust Company first, and then Triumph NIL is coming up second in uh, second half. Apologies. Tech Sideline is presented by First Bank and Trust Company. They're giving away one free annual TSL Pass subscription each week from January through mid-March. To enter, hit the link in the YouTube description or find one of their ads on techsideline.com. Be sure to enter each week and remember who you choose to bank with can make all the difference in your overall experience. First Bank and Trust Company is the bank that puts you first. Visit www.firstbank.com to learn more. Will, when is that get, when is that going till? As that is, reaching that is a darn good question. So I'm sitting here looking at our Twitter feed, and Jeff Morris of Cumberland, Virginia, was winner number nine last week. So I'm thinking everybody that... Um, submitted an entry last week, that winner will get announced this week, and it's actually over. So that said, go ahead and pile in if the page is still there, and I'll talk them into giving away another one. So, uh, But I do think it's over. Sweet. Um, so anyway, congratulations to uh, Jeff Morris of Cumberland. Congrats, Jeff Morris. You uh, psyched me out there. I had in my head, ready to go with First Bank, and then as the, the jingle is playing, you're like, uh, Triumph this week? Right, and right, right. So I apologize for that. So um, first of all, this is what Geo sounds like when, number one, he stays up till 3 a.m. the the <laughs> night before, and number two, I tell him to dial it down a little bit. He's more like at the same level with me and David. Oh, there we go. Let's get let's get some introductions, even though everyone probably knows who we are. Managing editor David Cunningham, across the way, founder and general manager Will Stewart. Behind the scenes, producing today, Mr. Carter Hill, and I'm your host, Giovanni Heater. All right, let's go talk about uh, this developing news in the world of Virginia Tech football. Uh, two new additions to the staff likely coming. Running backs coach Elijah Brooks from Maryland. That was reported by uh, Matt Zenitz of On3. And then at the offensive line spot, uh, Ron Cook from South Dakota. And also before that, uh, spent some time Crook. at Cincinnati. Crook, I apologize. Um, and that was reported by Doug Samuels from Football Scoop. David, I know you have a lot of insight for us on this. Hey, yeah, um, of course, spring ball starts on Thursday, the 16th. We're recording this on Monday, the 13th. So Tech kind of waited until the last minute to announce everything. Um, but for those of you wondering, okay, why are why is Tech hiring football coaches? Well, remember that Joe Rudolph uh, left, um, as did uh, – who's the other name I'm thinking of? Why are we blanking? Uh, Brad, we Glenn. Just, Brad Glenn. Brad Glenn went to Cincinnati to become the uh, offensive coordinator there, and Joe Rudolph went to Notre Dame to become the offensive line coach there. So yeah. Tech needed a quarterback's coach and an offensive line coach, or just two coaches and shake up the staff. Right. Um, Elijah Brown, um, if I butcher a name, just correct me because there's so much stuff going through my head. Elijah Brown comes from Maryland. Elijah Brooks. Elijah Brooks. Brooks. Elijah Brooks comes from Maryland. He's been at Maryland for the last four years. Former head coach at DeMatha Catholic. Kind of like big deal. Mike Jones. Right. Um, he's a good recruiter, um, and he's produced really good running backs. From my understanding, Stu Holt's going to slide to tight ends, which means Tyler Bowen's going to slide to quarterbacks, coach, or offensive line. Well, Virginia Tech's bringing in crook to coach offensive line he's a former uh he was on cincinnati staff for a while he comes from south dakota he's like a 33 year coaching vet um he's been around for a long time he's a west virginia native parkersburg um 
Uh, Parkersburg. Yeah, he's coached. He I went used to, to date a girl from Parkersburg. He went to West. <laughs> I believe he went to West Liberty State. That's where he went to school. Is that where he played college ball? Yeah. yeah. Um, he's coached all over the place. Harvard, Illinois, um, Stanford. Uh, he coached some really, really good offensive linemen. Um, he's coached some really, really good tight ends. Zach Ertz, Kobe Fleener, among mm. them. Uh, Kobe okay. Fleener, you'll remember, yeah, who torched name. Virginia Tech in the 2010 Orange Bowl. <laughs> the, the the game of which we shall not speak. Um, yeah. Um, so, my understanding is Tyler Bowen's going to be the quarterback's coach. It'll be Brooks at running back. Fontel Mines will stay put at wide receiver. Stu Holt will go from running back to tight end, which he has coached in the past. And then Crook will come in and coach the offensive line. So, Two guys. Crook has obviously been around a lot longer, um, but I think Brooks is a pretty good recruiter too. That helps you more kind of tie down the DMV a little bit. Um, and and Crook, I don't there there wasn't any names that like jumped off the page like okay that guy's an NFL guy. But if you look through his resume, he's coached a bunch of uh, a bunch of guys that have gone on to play in the NFL. So they've there are two guys who have produced a lot of good prospects. And uh, that news is not official. It's been reported. By the time you listen to this podcast, it will probably be official. Awesome. I think that pretty well covers it. Uh, I, I imagine the thing that when that when you look at the list that David gave you, that things Tech fans are going to home in on is the idea of Tyler Bowen as the quarterbacks coach. Right. To my knowledge, he's never played the position, never coached the position. Yes. So uh, that's one to watch, and I don't want to uh, give my opinion, my hot take on that. What I want is for us to have a chance to talk. And to we're going to do another. Well, so I was. Let me say this, Coach Pry is speaking with the media on Tuesday tomorrow, right? So and this and coordinators. So we want to get his take. We want to get their take on all this and how that's going to work. So the way we're going to cover this at Tech Sideline again, it's Monday at about eleven thirty in the morning. Yep. This will become official at some point, and then we'll report it on the site. And Chris Coleman will write an analysis article and break it down. And then we do hope later on this week to be able to talk about things in a podcast, yep. but. This is the reason we're struggling with names and things like that. This is literally breaking this morning while we're trying to put the podcast together. So once we get a chance to wrap our mind around it, hopefully we'll be able to do a podcast later this week, kind of letting you all know what to think. But until then, Chris always does a really good job breaking things down on the website. Yeah. So go to techsideline.com and subscribe. First month's free. (laughs) (laughs) So you'd have to think, uh, last little thing on football, you'd have to think that because of the expectations that they're going to have to answer questions on this topic tomorrow with their media availability, that they're going to get this news out today. One would think so, yes. yes. Okay. From everything I've heard, this news is coming out today. Makes sense to get it out before your head coach speaks to the media. (laughs) Yes. Yeah, no doubt. All right, let's go talk about... uh, Something that's very, very fun to talk about. It's been an incredible ride. Uh, Virginia Tech women's basketball for the first time in program history earns a one seed in the NCAA tournament. They're the overall number three. Uh, They're atop the Seattle three region, as they call it. They're going to host the first and second round uh, of their portion of the bracket right here in Blacksburg. Uh, So what happens is they will play Chattanooga on Friday. I believe you said that is a 530 tip. Yep. That's going to be a 530 tip. Inside Castle, they will loom the uh, if they are, can win that game, they will play the winner uh, of the eight nine game, which is always tricky in uh, South Dakota State and uh, Southern Cal uh, USC. And you have to in women's basketball, you have to you have to elaborate on which USC it is because of how good South Carolina is. Yes. Um, so. Um, the storylines here just continue to build. Uh, Sean Poppy was an assistant coach under Kenny Brooks for the last six seasons here in Blacksburg, got elevated to associate head coach uh, towards the tail end of his stay here. Uh, The former Hokie comes back after winning the SOCON in his first year at Chattanooga. Um, What a story that is, David. I know that, you know, both of us had an opportunity to talk to coach last night, and I think he's a little bit, and correct me if I'm wrong in my, in how I was able to kind of think about this, but I think he's a little bit, uh, like, oh, geez, they really did that to us. Like, they're really making us play him in in round one. Your thoughts? Yeah, I think it's interesting. Um, you know, Sean Poppy was, until he left last year in the off season. Um, he was one of the people that built the program. And there are a handful of people that are still here from from Kenny Brooks's first original staff in, in 2016 when he got hired, which I'm doing a feature on this week just to tease you that. Um, but... Sean Poppy meant so much to this program. And um, if you go and look, 
um, my article on Texas Sideline, there's a picture in there that I included that John Fleming got yesterday of the reactions of some of the players when it was announced that the Hokies were going to play Chattanooga. And they it, it didn't take them long. It took them maybe like a second to realize, oh, my God, we're playing Sean Poppy and Chattanooga. And even the players like Taylor Soule, who – This is her first season in Blacksburg. She understands the significance of playing Sean Poppy. Um, He meant so much to this program. As as Kenny kind of said last night, um, you know, he joked that they might not even have to scout each other because they both run some of the the same same plays. You know, I asked Georgia Amor about it, and she said, uh, you know, I'm sure both coaches will have their little, you know, variances, uh, you know. Change stuff up, a little tweak here and there, but for a, a lot of the same stuff, you know, Poppy was Tech's offensive guy for a long time. Um, he also did a lot of the defensive stuff, but he he's a very smart, smart coach, intelligent, and, uh, you know, he kind of took a lot of the same stuff. If you remember, the play Virginia Tech ran at North Carolina that got Kit Lee to win the game, yeah. The game wing shot. That was a Sean Poppy play. And yeah. Sean Poppy, and Kenny Brooks mentioned that he did. In the he said it on comment. the radio, and Sean Poppy said that he runs that play at Chattanooga and calls it VT. So <laughs> there's a lot of the same stuff going on here. But yeah, Kenny joked last night. He was like, "Man, I thought we were going to end up playing like JMU or something." You know, like um, JMU is in Tex region. Yeah, there are um, 14. So yeah, it's kind of one of those things. Like it's going to be really interesting. Um, but that storyline aside, Virginia Tech gets to play in Castle Coliseum, you know, five thirty on a Friday afternoon. That should be a phenomenal crowd. Um, oh yeah, it's gonna be. It's 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 like it, the storyline is great, but it's almost you could tell C- Coach was a little, a little, uh, a little bummed. He's like, some someone's got to end somebody's yeah. season here, and he, he's talking about. He said he, he said, and I quote, "I never do this. I never check my phone." But halftime of the ACC championship game yeah. against Louisville. He checked his phone because he wanted to see if Coach Poppy won the SoCon. Uh, I mean, he said they're great friends yeah. and uh, and and have been. And they he fa- wanted to check they f- in. They FaceTimed in the middle yeah. of the selection show last night. I don't know if anybody saw Kenny Brooks tweeted. Yeah, yep. um, go check. Go to Kenny Brooks's Twitter. Um, but in the middle of the selection show, like after Tech Chattanooga was announced, Kenny's really sitting in the middle of the selection show and hopped on FaceTime and FaceTime yeah. Sean Poppy and. Um, there's a picture of some of the assistant coaches FaceTiming Sean Poppy in the locker room in Greensboro after the AC championship, after both both teams right. won it because yeah, Chattanooga it beat Wofford in the SoCon title that same day. Um, yeah, Kenny mentioned that to me on the court after the the championship in Greensboro that um, that he'd been keeping up with Sean Poppy. So it's really really cool. He's obviously meant a lot to the program and. Um, a lot to all the players, not just Kenny, right? But, um, Georgia Amor, Elizabeth Kitley, a lot of those players. It's gonna be really interesting to see the emotions, right? Um, a couple of years ago, Kenny Brooks he took Tech. It was probably his third year. He took Tech in the WNIT to James Madison, and the Hokies played in Harrisonburg, and it was Kenny's first time back. And his emotions were overwhelming, and he mentioned that he said he didn't really control his emotions well, mm-hmm. and he's he's you know, figured that he's going to be fine come Friday. But um, it is a, it is a very interesting storyline. And the fact that it's going to be played in Castle Coliseum, it'd be different if it was on a neutral site, but right. it's going to be playing in Castle Coliseum. Um, I, I can't, I'm trying to think. I mean, Sean Poppy was here for so long and kind of raised his family here. I, I will confirm with him later this week, but I want to think one of his kids might have been born in Blacksburg. So wow. um, really, really cool ties um, just between Virginia Tech and Chattanooga. And it's kind of like, you have your hands up and like, of course, this is the right. matchup that happens. Right. And the one thing that, that could not favor well for Tech, and I know you got something, Will, yeah. so I'll cue you up in just a sec, is um, just being around the team and listening to how they talk, it seems like they they really amp themselves up with a, not hatred is the wrong word, but with like almost like a, a spite for other teams. Georgia talked about how in the Duke semifinal, she's like, I just wanted to go out there and beat the snot out of Duke because they beat us once. You know what I mean? And the same thing with the Miami game. And, like, the way that they get amped up for these games is to find the spite in why they want to beat these teams, whether they had beat them before or whether they're nationally respected or whatever it is. And Coach Brooks is like, you know, this is a little different. 
because now we can't have that same approach that we've had. You know, don't get me wrong. He's like, for 40 minutes, we can put it aside and we're going to go to work and we're going to go play. But there's not that same. And he and he even said, like, hatred was the wrong word. And he used a different word that's slipping my mind. But he's not he's like, there's not that same spite that there is when you're playing either a random opponent or opponent that you have history or rivalry or anything with. Um it's hard to find that in somebody that you respect and love so much. And you have to put that aside for 40 minutes. Was the word enmity by any chance? I don't think so, I don't but I could be um, wrong. So uh, that's all, that's all very interesting about that. That Georgia said that um, because Kenny is such a nice guy and such a gentleman. It's nice to know that his players are viewing the opposition that way. I will say with a <laughs> smile. So let's uh bigger picture, bigger picture stuff as, as the, Dave was going on yesterday and we were getting ready to watch the selection show. Um, you know, the buzz was that tech was going to get a one seed. I thought they would be the last one seed. They turned out to be the number three overall seed instead of the number four. Mm -hmm. Um, so, but there was also a chance they'd be a two seed. So I did some research and, and I could have gone further back, but I just did the last 10 women's NCAA tournaments because we're all used to watching the men's NCAA tournament and what happens in the seeds there. And, you know, how often do they, it's, it's well known that the five seed only wins two thirds of the game against the 12 seeds, that sort of thing. Well, there's a, there's a much larger imbalance in women's basketball. Um, so what I did was I put together a spreadsheet in the last 10 tournaments of how the number one seeds had done and how the number two seeds had done. Tech wound up getting the one seed, so I tweeted about that. And what I put out on Twitter was, in the last 10 tournaments, there have been, of course, 40 one seeds. All 40 of them have gone to the Sweet 16. So let me jump in here and say, if you're listening to this or watching this, and you're going, oh, don't jinx them, don't jinx them. Hey, this is not my problem. The last 40 one seeds have gone to the Sweet 16. If Virginia Tech doesn't make the Sweet 16 as a one seed, this is not a me thing. It's a they thing. It's unprecedented. Kind of like UMBC beating UVA 16-1. Um, so 40 made the Sweet 16. 33 of the 40 made the Elite 8. 27 of the 40 made the Final Four. 15 of the 40 made the title game. And, of course, the last 10 championships have been won by a one seed. So that gives you historical perspective. Now, when you start drilling down into the two seeds, I'm sorry, I don't have the numbers on my head, but there were some two seeds that had lost to some 10 seeds, and there were two seeds who didn't make it out of the round of 32. There were even more of them. So um, that puts it in perspective. So I'm seeing lots of looking around. Is there something? No, okay. nothing. I, no. I, was, I, was, I was gearing up for our future no, NIT conversation. But I, do, but I do think it's interesting because – Hokies get it get get an opportunity to play in Blacksburg. Fourth time right. in NCAA tournament history that Tech has hosted a game in Blacksburg. So 90, yeah, this, 94, so the, 99, 04. Now 94 was just one, one game, game. And it was right. the Auburn game. It was Auburn, yeah. And Auburn was a one? I don't remember. Or I don't, but anyway, 94, 99, 04. 04. Right. Those are the three previous times Tech's hosted a game in Blacksburg. And um it's one thing to be a four seed and host. It's one thing to be a one. And Gio and I were both there yesterday. I know you were not. Um, but the crowd in Castle yesterday was electric. Yeah, like, sweet. like I they I know they have a little webcam at the bottom of the screen that shows the stands and it didn't show all of it. But if you look at the pictures yesterday, there were a ton of people there. Like like so watch it. Let me give you the television experience because I stayed home and watched it on TV while I did my research. Um, they said at the beginning of the selection show that they had, I believe, 60 cameras around the country. I'm pretty sure. First of all, most of them didn't even have a crowd scene like what Tech had. Yeah. Most of them. And I'm pretty darn sure Tech had by far the biggest crowd. Yeah. So they they they. You know, everybody criticizes that, that flag department for this and that and how they promote themselves and how they appear. But from from my viewpoint, yesterday they crushed it better than any other pro yeah, any I, other program in the country. I don't I don't think anybody had anybody was close to, yeah. to coming to that crowd. And the tough part is you couldn't see the entire crowd in there. Like if you go look at any photos, like Clark Ruland took one from the corner. Yeah, if you go look at any photos, somebody anybody put out yesterday, um, that was a huge crowd. Like I, I will say, there were more people there than were there for Buzz Williams's 
opening presser after they hired Buzz because yeah. they did a similar thing. And I think there were more people there yesterday than there were for that. Probably. Yeah, I don't think the Sweet 16 was so so long ago, 2018, 19. I can't remember what the crowd was like for that 2019 thing. Yeah, I don't either. But I think, it, I mean, I think it was big. But I, it was it was a good crowd. And it was a really cool moment. Just everybody, you know, it's funny because Tech knew it could be, it was probably going to be the third, number one. And it was interesting. I talked to Charlie Cream, ESPN's bracketologist. He had a media thing on uh, on th- Friday or Saturday. And I talked to him and he said, yeah, there's no way Tech's not a one in my mind. And you could tell... As the sec, so they went to commercial after the first two brackets had been revealed. When they came back, everybody started to stiffen up and go, "All right, here it comes. Should be this one." And here you go. There, yeah. there goes Tech, and it was really, really cool just to see the reactions. And you know, as Kenny Brooks said, it's monumental for them to be a number one seed. Man, that means they're a one of the four best teams in the country. Yeah, as of I, right now, I honestly don't think you get you get so caught up in covering it and reporting it that I don't think the magnitude of it is sunk in with me. Yeah, the the committee basically says we think you're the third best team in the country right now. That that's incredible. Yeah, yeah. credit to Carter Hill for this one. Kenny Brooks said on nothing but net uh, either last night or this morning. He said that there were more people there last night than there was at his first game coaching at Virginia Not Tech. Surprised. That that crowd rivaled some of the. Some of the crowds for games, yes. Yeah. yeah. Now, so let me drill down into that a little bit um, because I lived through these. The the 98-99 season had many crowds of around 10,000, but that's because Tech didn't charge for women's basketball back then. Now, I remember that the uh, opening and second round games that they hosted that year, um, ticket prices were 10 bucks. Um and the opening round game against, I think it was St. Peter's, was so Castle's uh, capacity back then was 10,052. Right. And that is recorded as 10,052 fans. The second round game against Auburn um, was recorded as something like 9,800 fans. So it wasn't quite full, but it was really close. Now, in 2004, when they hosted a sub regional. The crowds were in the 6,500 range for the first game and I think 7,200 for the second game. So interest and hoopla had died a little bit. I think it's my personal opinion that these games this coming weekend will both be sellouts. You think so? I, that, that was, I was going to yeah. ask you guys I think that. It'll be what are full. the odds that we get a sellout? Yeah, I, th- I think it's going to be a sellout. I think they'll be full. Um, ESPNU. For Tech on Friday. Nice. Friday at 5.30 ESPNU. And the South, so South Dakota, so USC is the eight seed. South Dakota State is the nine. That's on. That's 8 p.m. on ESPN News after the Tech game. Okay. So uh, going back to the 99 game against Auburn, uh, when you ask people about the best crowds they've ever seen in Castle Coliseum, um, there are certain games I remember, some Memphis State games in the 80s. Uh, there was a Maryland game that the men played, and I don't remember when that was, maybe around circa 2005, where it snowed, so they just opened up Castle. The Maryland game. Right? Yeah, and students filled it up, and it was amazing. But the 99th uh, second-round game against Auburn that the women played, that's one of the craziest crowds I've ever seen. It was general admission, Yeah, as if I remember correctly. Everybody got in and packed in, and it was insane. Yeah, I think this crowd this weekend is going to be wild. Yeah. Um, tickets, so tickets go on. It, it is 11.50. Tickets to the general public go on sale at 2. Tickets to Hokie Club members go on sale at 2. 12. It's 11. Sorry, it's 11. And I, and I think a buddy told me high dollar donors are already buying Yeah, higher do, Yeah, and that so that's a smaller group, but that's like they open at 10 o'clock. Yeah. But essentially, 2 o'clock on Monday, if you're listening to this after, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> noon noon is when any Hokie Club members or women's basketball donors um, uh, or season ticket holders, I should say, women's basketball season ticket holders get in. And then 2 o'clock is, general, uh, is everybody else. 24 hours before the game. So Thursday at 5.30 in the afternoon is when the lottery opens for students. There are 1,500 free tickets for students, first come, first serve. That's a lot. That is. Kenny Brooks joked, he was like, I was hoping it was going to be 2,000. But 1,500 is a good number. I think, I don't know. Those will all fill, no doubt. I don't know what the number is usually for 
for men's and women's basketball games as far as the student section, but it's probably in that area. So it's I I would expect a sellout this weekend. To be honest, yeah, it's, it's five thirty, especially for the first game. Yeah, it's five thirty. They're number one seed. Kenny actually mentioned, and you know what? I was trying when I mentioned when I wrote the question down for Wit. I was hoping Wit would mention it. Wit didn't really mention it, but I, the question I asked about what did you learn from bat, a baseball and softball last year. Kenny mentioned it. Kenny was like, man, I saw the crowds for baseball and softball last year. I saw what that that home field advantage can do. I want that to be us come come Friday and Sunday. And I think it's possible. You're playing on a Friday at 530. People can take Knock a, off a little early. Yeah, people can take a half day from work or whatever and, and drive up. It's, it's early enough where you can go out afterwards. You can go to PK's. You can go get some dinner, right? That sounds lovely. But you get to you mm. get to watch Virginia Tech play in Castle Coliseum as a number one seed in the country. Like that's that's something that's never been done before. And I think I think especially since the game is on Sunday, we won't know what time the Sunday game is until uh, after the Friday games. Um, oh, really? Yeah. Okay. But uh, but I mean. I think Sunday could be a good crowd, too, depending on the time. I want to ask you guys, looking through their portion of the bracket, I have it pulled up. If, if anyone else doesn't, um, I'll give you guys a second to pull that up. Um, who who in tax bracket kind of scares anybody a little bit? Um, are, I think tax capable a lot of, of beating teams. anybody, but this is a loaded teams. bracket. There are a lot of teams that are scary. I don't know, Will. I assume, Will, you were watching on TV, so I'm sure you saw it. Um the reactions when I know uh, I don't know if it was Carter who said something to me about it, but the reactions when like UConn yeah. as a two seed came up, everybody was like, "Oh, no. Uh -oh. <laughs> uh, North Carolina is in the bracket as a six seed. Tennessee's mm. a four. Tennessee's a four. Ohio State's the three. Who's, yeah. uh, who's the five? The five is Iowa State. Yeah, that's so, a yes. loaded, loaded yeah. region. Probably the most loaded, besides. I'd argue it's the most loaded. Maybe the South Carolina bracket. South Carolina bracket's good. Too. <laughs> yeah, but they're a steamroller. Uh, first of all, one more attendance note. That Auburn game that wasn't completely a sellout in 99, that was on a Monday. So Ooh, that, was, mm. that was Saturday, Monday. So this is different. This is Friday, Friday Sunday. Yeah. So I think they both will be sold out. Um, but back to the topic, uh, they did ask, I believe they asked on the national selection show, which one seed has the toughest path to the Final Four? And the immediate answer... Probably from a Re Rebecca Lobo was Virginia Tech because they got to go through UConn, UConn yeah. to get there. Now UConn's body of work puts them as a two seed, yeah. But they had injuries and things like that, and they are playing as one of the, one of the better teams in the country. But right even now. even USC and South Dakota State, the other two teams in this region, I mean, they're eight nine, but they're no pushover. I mean, we again, the the Tech's playing really good basketball right now, but like. Um, Miami is a nine seed. Miami is the same seed as South Dakota State. And Tech lost to Miami back mm -hmm. in the regular season. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Just to give you some perspective, right? It's mm -hmm. not like Virginia Tech is... Virginia Tech could, but I wouldn't expect Virginia Tech to steamroll its way through mm -hmm. like a South Carolina might. But Iowa State is the five. Tennessee is the four. North Carolina is the six. Ohio State is the three. James Madison is there at the 14 against Ohio State. Baylor's the seven. We all remember what happened when Virginia Tech played Baylor previously. Ninety now, to forty-eight. Now different, different head coach, obviously. Diff yeah. But in UConn's the two, right? Yeah, they're good teams in yeah. in this region. Oh, yeah. Virginia Tech's gonna have to play its best basketball, and you know if Virginia Tech wins the first, you know, wins out of Blacksburg, it'll go to Seattle and run into potentially Tennessee. And then potentially Carolina or UConn or, or Baylor, Ohio State. So the the nice thing is, is they all kind of have to beat up on each other first, right? Before we get there, right? Like, cause like Iowa State's going to play Tennessee. UConn's going to have to play um, Carolina probably. It, and looks like the Sweet 16. Carolina's going to have to play Ohio State in round two. Yeah. So it's kind of shaping up for a Sweet 16 meeting with Tennessee and an Elite Eight meeting with UConn. How yes. about that? The two most historic programs ever, arguably. <laughs> and, and but Tech be, already beat Tennessee this year. Yeah, yeah, and, they, and, yeah it's early though. Yeah, and, and I, I wish changed. I wish it was a Greenville bracket, except you know you might have to go through South Carolina in that case. It's it's uh, unfortunate that's in Seattle and you won't have a, a very good big following. Tech contingent. The there. good news is how many teams from that? How many teams from that? 
that side of the country are all in that, in that bracket. Yeah, not I don't many. Th- I don't think like, people I don't are know. going from stores. Like, obviously, I would think UConn and Tennessee probably would travel well because... But it's not like the place will be full of UConn and yeah, Tennessee. Yeah, it's not fans. like you're playing South Carolina in Greenville. Right. I or know. a couple of years ago, where was it? I think it was last year. Someone had to. It was an ACC team that Some, went and got had to beat play at UConn State, because they were playing NC State in State had to play at UConn. Yeah. Yeah, last year in the NC State was were, were they a one seed last year? No, but they were. I mean, it was like a they were up there and they, it was they like had, a, a big big time clash. They, and they might have. I think NC State was a one seed. Really, they yeah. might have been. Yeah, I should know that from my research. That but I it was did. just that was just where the regional just happened to be in stores. Right. Yeah, that is. Yeah. yeah. So so anyway, back to this coming weekend. Um, sure, they they should have no problem with Chattanooga. It's a one and a sixteen, and then you're going to have uh, uh, USC or who was the other team? South Dakota State. South Dakota State. So again, going back to ninety nine, uh, you know Auburn came in here, and I'm sorry, I don't remember what seed Tech was and what seed Auburn was, but Auburn was a good basketball team. And they were from the SEC, where I'm sure they have good crowds, and Tennessee was in their heyday, so Auburn had played at Tennessee and seen big crowds. But Tech came out, 10,000 fans, well, 9,800, punched them in the mouth, and, and Auburn melted down. Uh, so if you, if you, you know, Castle Coliseum with 5,000 fans is great. 10,000 fans, it's a different world. So I would be utterly shocked if something bad happens in that that 8-9 game if tech makes it to that second round i just don't see it happening i'm uh, and the other thing too you got to look, look at the fan bases usc is a fan base that is not that's more of a national brand fan base they're probably not packing women's basketball games and um cuz they don't really pack their football games either you right. better um, you better do some research yeah, before you come out well, here sp- but think I'm, about I'm, location wise los angeles i mean bill I'm, has I'm, said I'm, when I'm, he went I'm, out there for no, ucla no, I'm, I, people I, go to the games i agree i'm just saying you better do some research every before. once in a while we say stuff like that and we're wrong cuz we yeah. haven't done our research i mean you got to remember that usc is a historic women's basketball program yeah really but but like in Los Cheryl Angeles, Miller. Yeah. See, see I, re- I remember when ODU was good and ODU used to win national championships and then UConn, but I don't remember in between. You're right. They, they do have a good history. Yeah, like there's, there's some pretty good, shall I, shall I go down and read the all time greats that played at Sure. USC? Let's not spend too much time on it. <laughs> uh, Cause Cynth- I, Cynthia Cooper, Lisa Leslie, I remember that. I remember uh, Cheryl Miller, yes. Tina Thompson. Those are just four. So like, like, there are that that place is full of history. Will they travel all the way over here? Probably not. But they've been to three Final Fours and won two NCAA tournaments, and it's you know it's not like now those were both in the '80s. But it's not like this USC program isn't anything. Doesn't have some sort of history. Yeah. Okay. Well, so my argument was that like they don't play in a hostile crowd every night. Uh, yeah, it's, I think you could. I I can. You think you could make that argument? Anybody that's been in the same conference with UConn, for example, has played in front of big crowds in stores. Right. Anybody who's been in the SEC has played in front of big crowds. I don't know that either South Dakota State or USC has right. played in an atmosphere that they're going like to have to play in here. Like they're going to see. Yep. Solid point. All right. Anything and, else? And the, and the YouTube comments are open if you disagree. Yeah. If you disagree, <laughs> please. Um. Anything else on women's basketball before we move to the NIT? Uh, let's see. Uh, I don't think I mean, so. I mean, it, the news. I mean, everyone knows the news. Yeah. ACC champs. We did. We covered all that. Um, I, I, I do. I do think it's great being the number one seed and getting to play a sixteen. In case you're a little rusty, because there is a long layoff between the con- in women's basketball between the conference tournaments. And and for the most conferences, yeah. I think the Big Twelve. Some I, play I think the Big Twelve is like the one conference that plays. This past week, yeah. like plays in the, yeah, but but Kenny, you know, it was interesting. Somebody asked Kenny, I don't remember who it was. Maybe you do, Gio. Um, you know, if there was any rust, he was like, no, we just did a lot of individual stuff this past week, and um, you know, we're gonna get back, get to scouting probably starting Tuesday, and figure some stuff out. I mean, you got to think. I mean, this is a team again that's won twenty seven games. Twenty eight is the all time record yeah. for most wins in program history, by the way, which could be achieved on Sunday. Could have break it this weekend. Um yeah, on Sunday. Um I mean this is I, I I don't think this like when we have Kenny Brooks on the podcast over the summer, it'll that'll be the time to ask him, you know, just has he had a chance to process it. But like 
from where Virginia Tech was when Kenny Brooks took over, where it was under Wol- Dennis Wolf and Beth Duncanberger, to where it is now, it is night and day. And and this is it is it is truly amazing that this team is a number one seed. Like a couple of years ago, this team couldn't make the WNIT. Right. We could barely make the WNIT. Like, um, and now the Hokies are a top four team in the country. So one of my favorite questions to ask people, and the first time I remember this asking this was when we had Storm Murphy on after the ACC championship. I said, you're what, 23? So I got a question for you. Do you understand the magnitude of what you've done? <laughs> and I do remember his answer was, he's like, not right away, but in the in the week afterwards when all these – old Hokie fans came up to me and started telling me, he's like, that's when I got it. So I can't wait to ask Kenny that question. Yeah. Being a number one seed, do you understand the magnitude of what you've done? Well, they'll be the first to tell you. And they told us many times yesterday, not satisfied jobs, far from finished. Number one seeds. Great. ACC tournament championships. Great. But uh, they'll, they'll be the first to tell you that there's a lot of work to do. Um, They haven't gotten fully back to work yet. He said, everyone's kind of dealing with, The weather's changing, so you got allergies, and some of the girls have a little bit of a cold, and he's like, so they're letting them ease back into things before now they have on spring break. Right. Now they have an opponent. Now they have something to game plan for, um, even though he said they're not going to have to do much scouting report stuff. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so, so, so winning the ACC first time ever, one seed, first time ever. They have a chance to make the Elite Eight, first time ever, chance to win 30 games, first time ever. Two time player of the year in conference, first time ever. Yeah, just amazing just absolutely a uh, lot of records i will say i'll say it one more time i hate that they have to play chattanooga round one wouldn't you so rather it be like the story's awesome like don't Jackson, get me wrong like a jackson state but if they had uh, norfolk state yeah. they would have no problem <laughs> just absolutely turning on the gas and beating them by four yeah, but it's a very virginia tech thing to end up with chattanooga yeah it's but you gonna know. be like you yeah. know you know no, no, gonna it's gonna be it's gonna be, gonna be well, it's not gonna be sad well it'll be emotional yeah i mean it'll yeah. be it'll be you know it's gonna it's gonna be interesting to see how i think it'll impact kenny more than players yeah i think so too i think, think the so? players will be fine i think it'll be but but i but i think but here here's the difference right i mentioned Kenny's trip a couple of years ago to James Madison. He couldn't control his emotions. Tech lost in the second round of the or first or second round of the WNIT. Mm. Kenny couldn't Kenny couldn't control the emotion. Like it was so much going back there. I'm curious to see Poppy's emotions. Right. Right. Yeah. You go to this Virginia is a Tech. Play, coin. Uh, yeah. True. Um, and his players are not going to have any stake in this. Yeah. Well, it's I, our players, Kenny and, and, and him. him. Yeah. And that, and that was the same thing with with Kenny's players. When he went to JMU for the first time, right? Um, and, and here's the thing. It's it's not necessarily Tech JMU on the same playing field. It's like Tech and Chattanooga, right? Where, like, Tech is a number one seed. Like, like there is a big gap. Not saying that Chattanooga is not better it's than a 16 seed. It's chasm in women's basketball. But, but it is a big difference. And you've right. got to think, there are players on this roster for Virginia Tech that have been here before, right? They've won 10 Quadrant 1 games this year. I, I don't have it off the top of my head what Chattanooga's net ranking is, but Chattanooga's probably a three or a four in terms of quadrant. Three would mean that they would be anywhere between 50 and 100 in the net, right? This is... Virginia Tech has beaten teams of that magnitude many, many, many times this year already. It shouldn't phase the players, but I, I am curious to see how emotional Kenny gets. Yeah. I'll right. tell you who it will not phase is Georgia Amor. If you, <laughs> if you talk to her, she is like literally an assassin. Um, and she's somebody triumph. If you're listening, we should definitely get on uh, our triumph spotlight at some point because she's uh, a lot of fun to talk to. All right. Is it time for the NIT talk? Yeah. Give me a sec. Chattanooga's net ranking is 165. Yeah. Mm. This, this is mm. okay. uh, Chatt- Chattanooga played one game against a. Quadrant one team this year. I don't know who it is. I won't look. I'll, I'll yeah. figure it out later. But anyway, so Chattanooga has played one, maybe one game of this magnitude all season. Oh. Virginia Tech has played 12 to 13 of them. And again, they have probably not played in a 9,000 no. seat sold out uh, arena. That's for sure. All right. All so right. NIT. NIT. 
Virginia Tech's going on the road. They're going to play Cincinnati on Wednesday. Quick turnaround. Love that. It just happened so yeah. quick with the um, uh, Wednesday, right, Carter? Yes, Wednesday yeah, at Wednesday, nine, at Wednesday 9, 9 p.m. Yep. So so the NIT seeds, it's got 32 teams, and it seeds the top 16. Yes, one through four. And Cincinnati is a four seed, yep. so I'm not sure anybody beyond a four is actually even seeded in their mind. So ordinarily that mean, that would mean Tech is a five seed, but I don't think that's the case. I think they get their 16, and then they just fill them Pretty in. Pretty much, um, right. Now, you want to talk about – you talked about Virginia Tech going to – Virginia Tech women's team going to uh, Harrisonburg in the WNIT. The NIT loves these little things. And I don't know if they did this on purpose or not, but um, Landers Nolly plays for Cincinnati <laughs> now. There we go. You know, and it's almost like they do that stuff on purpose to, to gin up a little bit of interest. Well, it, um, it gets viewership. I do think Tech Cincinnati – I mean, it's old Metro – Rival, right? Like, yeah, I remember this that. Is, back this then. is going back to to pre nineteen ninety one. Last time they met was March nineteen ninety one when they yeah. were Met Metro Conference foes. They played thirty times. Did they overlap in the Big East? They did not. They they did not. Um, okay. I um. So of course not, I not was, in not in basketball. Okay. Of course, I lived through it in the eighties when Cincinnati was in the Metro, and the top teams back then, of course, were Louisville and Memphis State. And generally, the third best team was either Virginia Tech or Florida State. Cincinnati was not. They became what they, well, they have the old history of Oscar Robertson and that sort of thing. But at that point in time, in the, in the early 80s to early 90s, they weren't that great of a program, as I, as I recall. I don't remember them. I think Tech beat them most times they played. Yeah. Oh, I mean, Tech's 18 and 12 against Cincinnati. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I, I think I think it's going to be interesting uh, Wes Miller is the head coach of, of Cincinnati is that and, right? and former UNC Greensboro coach who, of course, Mike Young would have played. Did did Wes play? Who did he play for in college? Did he oh. play for North Carolina? Yeah, he Carolina. yeah Carter says Carolina. Um, um, but he and Mike Young coached against each other, you're saying? Yes. So if um, Virginia Tech were to win game one at Cincinnati. They would then uh, play the winner between Hofstra and Rutgers. Uh, Rutgers, probably the best team uh, in this. Rutgers and Clemson, probably eh, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, State as well. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the one seeds are good because the, essentially the one seeds are the, besides Carolina who didn't decline yeah. their I mean, Oregon's opportunity. Good too. Those four one seeds are solid. It's the uh, it's essentially the first four out besides Carolina and swap that and, and with no, Oregon. Nobody wants to play at Rutgers. Well, it's a tough place to play. It's a tough place to play, and that's that's a tough round two game, no doubt, to have to yeah. go play at Rutgers. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so Mike Young and Wes Miller go way back. Miller was there from 2011 and 2021. So wow. overlap. I mean, Mike Young, of a course, lot. was there for a long time. They they probably played two to three times a year. Wow. Um, so probably very familiar with each other. Um, Cincinnati, kind of an up, up, up and down year. Didn't play a lot of quality. I mean, they, the, a, the AAC is solid, but it's kind of front loaded with like a Houston. Yeah. Um, so Houston, is Memphis in the AAC? Yeah. Okay. They so won 21 games. It's not, it's yes, they did. Cincinnati but, did. Um, yeah. But 21 games. but there's a reason why they were left out of the NCAA tournament. So right. um, I do I do think this is going to be a good opportunity. I mean, I am not going. Um, <laughs> I would go if Virginia Tech football didn't have 9.30 a.m. practice the next day, first day of spring practice on Thursday morning. And we have NCAA tournament media for the women here in Blacksburg. Yeah. Um, so, but I do think it's, I mean, Gio was in the locker room as well, chatting with guys after, after Tex lost to NC State last week. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I know we're not going to get into the weeds of that, but the guys want to play. It's completely different than North Carolina who, you know, Armando Baycott was like, I don't really care if we play, right? North Carolina declined an NIT bid. Hokies want to play in the NIT. I think it's a good opportunity to get Rodney Rice some minutes. Right. We've seen him yeah. burst on the scene. MJ Collins is... Uh, has, has proven his worth time and time again this year. It's an opportunity for him to get more minutes. But it's also a chance for Tech to kind of go out on the positive side. I mean, obviously, only one team gets to win the NIT. But I do think it's an opportunity. Now, Tech won't get to play in Castle unless something, well, it, it won't happen. But, like, in theory, had Hofstra won and had Virginia Tech won, one of the Virginia Tech or Hofstra is going to have to host, but it'll probably be Hofstra because Virginia Tech is going to host an NCAA oh, tournament yeah. here. That's true. So, yeah. so and the dates do overlap. But, uh, but I do think it, it'll be good for for Justin Mutz and Hunter Couture and Grant Bazilli to play one more game together. Again, we don't know whether or not Couture and Bazilli are going to come back. Um, 
mutts his career is over at, at the end of the year. Um, so, and I know Mike was kind of excited. He was juiced up, ready. To, he, he wants to go play one more game with, with this team. And um, it, it's so interesting, man. We've talked about it multiple times, but like this Virginia Tech team beat a team like Penn State, right? Who went toe to toe with Purdue did, yesterday. Did Penn State wind up being a seven seed? Uh, a ten. Think, I think they're a ten. I know they seven. were ten in the Big Ten tournament, and they nearly won the thing. Carter said they're a ten playing seven. Okay. Um, but yeah, they almost beat Purdue. Um, Tech's beating Virginia. Purdue's a one seed. Yeah. Tech's beating Virginia and Duke and other good teams this year. We've seen what Virginia Tech can do. And I think it's disappointing from a from a staff's perspective and a player's perspective of we know what we could have done if we, you know, we're on top of us our stuff every single day. So it's for them. It's one more opportunity yeah, to go out the, and kind of the the problem is they play typically well. don't play well on the road, right? So, so both sure, those games were at yeah. home. Um, so the psychology of the NIT is an interesting thing, and and you know I, I don't pay attention to it unless Tech's in it. But but my take on it is. Um, you know, in 19, when Tech won it in 1995, they were an up-and-coming team. They were they were a bubble team. Didn't make the NCAA tournament. I don't know how much of a bubble team they were. Don't crucify me if you have a different opinion. I just know they were a good team that year. They won 20 games, didn't make the NCAAs, and they were a team on the rise, and they stormed to the championship. The next one I remember is, um, and I'm sorry I don't remember what, this, what year this was. I'm pretty sure Seth Greenberg was the coach. I'm sorry I don't remember. Probably. But Tech had to travel to Memphis in the second round, and Memphis was a team that was rising, and they blew Tech out. And so my point is that painting with a broad brush are two kind of teams that make the NIT, those teams that had what you can call a disappointing season, and I think you can call Virginia Tech's season a disappointing I season. I agree. You know, and then you have teams that are on the rise, that are on their way up. So you look at Texas A and M last year; they made, made they, it to the final. They did not make the NCAA's. They made it to the final of the NIT, and made it to. The, and they're on the they're on the upswing, and so typically it's those upswing teams that make a deeper run in the NIT. Yeah, looking at the bracket, it is kind of nice. Tech's going to play at Cincinnati. That could have been. Seton Hall would have been okay, um, but otherwise, like we would have gone to like Utah Valley or. Um, well, the rumor yeah, that yeah, David so. heard is Tech was going to go to Liberty. That would have been cool, but I think that somebody got Virginia Tech and Villanova confused because Villanova's going to Liberty, right? That's which, true. which is going to be. Can you imagine how X number of screaming Liberty fans? Villanova's got to travel to Liberty. Villanova, Villanova won an NCAA tournament five years ago. Yeah. And Villanova now is going to play at Liberty in the NIT. That's how far Villanova's fallen. Do you know how many people the Vine Center holds? I do not. Is it called the Vine Center still? I don't know. I, I thought it would be interesting, though. I, I I had heard that Tech might play Liberty, and I'm and Tech and Liberty scrimmaged preseason, too. Ah, um, holds 8,085 people. Okay, so kind of like Casual. That's a lot of people. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I think... Uh, I think it, it's a good opportunity for Tech. I mean, I wouldn't expect the Hokies to go win the whole thing, but it'll, you know, I think uh, they'll go out with a bang. First time Tech's played in the NIT since 2016. Buzz Williams, second year, played Princeton at home, beat them. Um, and then what? I and then went more. to BYU and lost. And I I don't know if you remember that game, but there was like some – some foul calls that came down to the. I think there was some home cooking going on. I, that is me. I remember bad feelings. That from is that me game. remembering it as like a 16, 17 year old. Um, there, there was all. I, all I remember is Tech probably should have won and lost at BYU. And you're playing different time zone, and you're playing a BYU. Everything in the NIT is done in a huge rush. Yeah. Yeah. And and I mean that's the thing, right? Virginia Tech got a little bit lucky playing Wednesday instead of Tuesday. But Tech found out at, you know, 1030 on Sunday night and is going to play in less than three days. Right. Like, for there are teams that are playing on Tuesday that have to turn around. They essentially have Monday to scout, and then, boom, you're on the road. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a tough draw in many cases. And going back to the 95 uh, NIT when Tech won in the quarterfinals in, in Castle against New Mexico, State or New Mexico? I think it was New Mexico. Um, New Mexico had played an overtime game out in Arizona, I think, that went beyond midnight 
on like a Monday night. So then they had to travel on Tuesday, be ready to, ready to play on Wednesday yeah. on the road. And it showed New Mexico had a really good team, but they were out of it in the first yeah. half. Tech got up by like 15 at halftime. Yeah, the good news for Tech is kind of like you mentioned, Rutgers, if Tech wins, Rutgers or Hofstra are not too far travel wise from where they'll be. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, they're all, they'll, all, they'll, they'll already be up there. Last question on the NIT. I, I come from a different place where the NIT is looked at as like a serious disappointment, right? Yeah. And so, and, it, and like it's to the point where people don't go to the games and it's just not really cared about because of the disappointing season that took place. If Tech does make a run in the NIT, what kind of support does that get? Is is that do people get excited about an NIT trophy, or is this season still looked at as a disappointment, oh, oh, or how's that me. how's that work? Because it seems like times have changed yeah. from twenty years ago. It would be an exciting thing. Yeah, uh, so we've had this conversation on the uh, podcast before, and, and Chris Coleman is pretty adamant about he thinks the Virginia Tech fans like the NIT too much. Yeah. <laughs> that it's too romanticized in their minds from the 95 uh, championship. And 73. And 73. Now, 73, that was a huge deal. Only only 20-some teams made the NCAA tournament. So winning the NIT was a huge deal. 95, still a fairly big deal. These days, it's not that big a deal. So it's Chris's opinion that it's over-romanticized in Tech fans' minds. I could not tell you who mm-hmm. won any of the last – NIT tournament. Of course not. At all. You know, not like, last like, year, the year before. The only well, reason the only I people, know, the only people any the only people that watch it are the people that well, that are in it. Yeah. Either crazy basketball fans or the, the people that are supporting the teams that are it's in it. It's literally happening at the same time as yeah. the real the So real so tournament. there there have been uh recent NITs where I've uh looked at it as validation that like I talked about earlier, that tech is on the rise. Mm-hmm. Oh, please win this thing to prove you're an up and coming Probably 2016, team. right? Uh, and and one of the Seth years also when they wound up getting knocked yeah. out by Ole Miss at home. Uh, so let me wrap up the answer to your question. Um, I think it's fun to be in it, fun to watch. But if they lose at Cincinnati, I think people will go, oh, that's a bummer, and they'll get over it quickly. I agree. I but think, winning it would be really fun. I think people want to see Virginia Tech play good basketball. I think that's the bottom line. You yeah. want to see Virginia Tech play good basketball, win or lose, right? If Virginia Tech comes out and plays good defense and loses, you're going to be like, man, those guys gave it a heck of an effort. Congrats to Mutz and Gator and Bazilli, whether they come back or not. You know, Appreciate everything you guys did for the program, and that's that, right? <clears throat> if Tech comes out and does not play good basketball, people are going to say what Will said. Well, oh well, that's a bummer. Thanks, guys. And like, I, I let's go I, watch the women. <laughs> I, I think it. I don't know if it necessarily comes down to wins and losses. I think it comes down a lot to whether or not Virginia Tech plays good basketball. And like, I don't think Tech is Tech has has been so inconsistent. And uh, you know, I think if Tech wins, people will be like, "Oh yeah, nice, right?" Um, but I also think there will be people who will be like, wow, Virginia Tech couldn't have played like this earlier in the year. Like, you know, I, I think it'll be – Where's go that back been on the road all season? I do think it'll be interesting. There's going to be the women's tournament going on at the same time, right, that Tech fans are probably going to be glued to, I would, I would think. Um, so I don't know. But I think people will support them if they win. Um, if they lose, it'll probably just be like, huh, oh, another one of those games. Yeah. And the year will be over and that'll be that and – um, yeah, and then they'll they'll start asking the question about who's coming back. Yep. Um, so so w- one last comment, uh, and and I thought about this while you were talking, David. Uh, so you know I can pull up the analytics on our website uh, at any time and see how many people are on the site. And and even as things were building up to the women's selection show last night, there were more people on our men's basketball board than our women's basketball board. Hmm. I did not look at it. During the selection show because the women's selection show, because I was working, trying to do screen grabs and tweet and things like that. But but you did a good job of. Thank you. But even yesterday, the the interest in the men's tournament that tech was not in and the interest in getting an NIT bid was enough to throughout the afternoon have more people on the men's basketball board than the women's basketball board. It was close, you know, so so, you know. You look at some of the more storied women's programs in the country and the following that UConn has and Tennessee has and now South Carolina has. Um, you know, Virginia Tech is is getting there, and yeah. I think this weekend will be fantastic. But hopefully it'll it'll just continue to breed new fans and build upon itself. Yeah, I think the biggest thing is if you, you know, I think a lot of people, this is Virginia Tech, it goes for a lot of sports, but I think 
I think there are a lot of people who have followed Virginia Tech athletics for a long time, and and it, I, I, you know, you we saw the the same kind of thing with baseball and softball last year, right? Where once people saw the atmosphere in that Tech softball park and English field provided for that regional weekend, people were like, "Oh man, I want to come be a part of it. Yeah, I want to come be a part of it because this team is special." And and the crowds for the super regionals were wild. <laughs> Obviously, it's going to be a little bit different because it's one weekend here. But I do think that like it is an opportunity for Virginia Tech to showcase on a national stage. There were a lot of people who watched the the ACC tournament, and so maybe that was the regional weekend for them. And this will be the super regional weekend. But I think if Virginia Tech makes it to the Sweet Sixteen. I think there will be a lot of people that are jacked up, fired up, and are like, I cannot wait to support this team from here on out. But I think what Tech fans are afraid of is the disappointment. The, I cannot wait to support this team, and then they come out and lay an egg. Which which some teams have done in the past, Meh. right? And not just women's basketball, but across all sports, right? A team that's supposed to be pretty highly thought of comes out and lays an egg, and you go, well, why was I so invested in this right yeah. but if if tech can go i don't want to say tech's going to blow the doors off anybody but if tech can come out and win solidly and put on a good show this weekend fans are going to be really invested heading to seattle well and i, I think uh so my line for when we're talking about women's basketball now i want to see him make the elite eight anything after that to me is gravy um because yeah yukon's there yeah, and they got a lot of experience at that stuff. True, and that's going to be a tough mountain. Their coach to climb. has been there. Their time team, after their time. team's been there. They're going to have more fans in Seattle than Virginia Tech will. So, yeah. um, that's my goal: is hit that elite eight, do something that's never been done, win that thirty games, make that elite eight. And if you beat UConn, assuming it's going to be UConn, and you go to the Final Four. That's gravy, yeah. man. That's Let's awesome. Let's hope like Ohio State or Carolina can take care of that before. So, so yeah, it before is then. it is twelve twenty three on Monday. Tickets for the Hokey Club have been on sale for about twenty three minutes. And I was just texted that it sounds like Tech might sell out. Might sell out. It's not official. Well, yet. like like but it looks like the way going. it's trending. It looks like they're going to sell out. This is before the general public has gotten tickets. So yeah. So expect a good crowd on uh, Friday and Sunday whenever you get a chance to get out there. And don't and don't forget, I'm sure you guys are going to be doing TSL today this week. It's going to be busy with baseball. Baseball's at Miami. Softball is on the road somewhere. You should know that. Where's softball on the road? They got a midweek game at App State, mm. and then I forget where they're on the road. You're NCAA the wrestling, NCAA, NCAA wrestling championships on oh, Saturday. Yeah. That's in Tulsa. Yes. So Tech has we have the night off obviously on Saturday because games on Friday and yeah. Sunday. There's so much going on. Um, Ten wrestlers in the NCAA tournament in Tulsa. That's going to be electric. Program Jack, high. Jack Brizendine will have a, a story on that. We are going to be busy this week. There's going to be a lot of stuff going on. Very busy week. Go to TechSideline.com. So uh, I, you answered my question, but anything specific coming up this week? I know we talked about possibly doing another podcast Ooh, Wednesday. It's, there, there's uh, potential. Football it's going to be busy. There, there, yeah. So football spring practice starts Thursday. Um, I think Chris Coleman's probably going to end up covering that press conference and stuff. It'll be with assistant and a couple of players because I will at the same time will be covering women's basketball press conference, um, women's basketball media stuff on Thursday. I have like one or two women's basketball stories I'm going to do before then. Men's basketball on Wednesday night, obviously. On two, the, the football coaching news should be announced sometime in the next couple of hours. Um, so by the time you're listening to this, it'll probably be announced. So congrats to you. We'll have another podcast this week <laughs> for it. Um, <laughs> Uh, but Brent Pry press conference and some coordinators on Tuesday. So a lot of football stuff going on. Again, spring practice starts Thursday. We get to view practice for the first time. So get to see a lot of the new guys. Um, we always go in and watch the quarterbacks, quarterbacks throw. Quarterbacks. We watch the quarterbacks throw. I know throw. Chris okay. Coleman will be glued to the quarterbacks. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, there's baseball midweek stuff going on. I think they're at ETSU. Softball's at App State. Um There'll be some other women's basketball stuff. Men's basketball, obviously, is on the road on Wednesday night. Baseball, softball, and wrestling over the weekend. We'll have coverage of that as much as we can. Um, Everyone talks about the football to basketball crossover season being the worst. This is worse. But if you do 
all of the sports like we do, this is by far and away worse. This is crazy. And on I'm, top of it, I, women's lacrosse is two, which nobody talks about. Well, they you're get no calling love. games, though. So it's like, yeah, it's everything's going on. Um, yeah, and lacrosse I'm, I'm, had a big win the other. We should give a shout-out to lacrosse. Lacrosse had a big, a big win. win. What win. was it? They put up 19? 19 to 4 was the final score. Over Pitt. Over Pitt. And that was looked at as two teams that were pretty equal towards the bottom of the ACC, but Tech had hung in there with number one North Carolina didn't play great on the road at number two Syracuse. They got they kind of got wiped. But um, but they they fought hard against JMU, and all of a sudden the last two weeks Tech has scored scored seventeen goals and nineteen goals, and they did this one against an ACC team and uh, starting to, starting to click okay. a little they're bit. On the a lot come. of freshmen on the team. They're on the come because up. like they are freshman led. They're kind of like Duke basketball a little bit as far as Skyra's got a new program and they. They are pretty much freshman and sophomore led. Their best goal scorer, Olivia Vergano, is a sophomore. Okay. So they watch out for the lacrosse in the ACC is just like basketball and just like softball and baseball is loaded. I mean, it's the ACC. But lacrosse is very, I mean, let's put it this way. The last three teams to play for national championships, North Carolina, Boston College, and Syracuse are your top three teams in the yeah, ACC. Yeah. So um, Virginia, Notre Dame is great, but. Tech's gonna tech. Uh, yeah. Coach Skyra is the right. There's right a, person. there's a lot of stuff going on right now. I mean, I, softball won a series at North Carolina. Um, Boston uh, Tech lost to Boston College in baseball, but Boston College is on the come up. Um, I know, I know, yeah, I know, I know, I know. Shouldn't have will lost will this. I shouldn't have uh, mentioned Boston College? <laughs> I was talking to Evan Hughes about this yesterday though, and he was like, I'm, "I've been really impressed with Boston College." Well, just, they came in with a good record, yeah. yeah. Um, so, but there's a lot of good stuff. They going. might be ranked after beating us. Uh, they're. I don't think they're ranked today, but if they continue to, I mean, I think they're like just out. I think Chris okay. Hyron said they're just outside the poll. So okay. they're yeah. they're a quality program. Um, but yeah, so what did a, we drop to? I don't know, Tech's 17 maybe? Tech's still ranked. Oh, so is tech, okay. tech's still top 20. Tech's still yeah. From 11 to I 17. So. Yeah, so not bad. Sense. again, there's a lot of good stuff coming up on, on Tech Sideline. Go subscribe, techsideline.com. Um, I'm I'm really stoked because in the middle of all the basketball stuff we've got going on this weekend, we get to watch some wrestlers wrestle for yeah. a national championship. Yeah. Caleb Henson and Makai Lewis could go win national championships. I can't wait to see how Caleb Henson And that's does. that's going to be outstanding. So yeah. I know Jack Brisnan will do a great job covering that. Yeah. We are not sending him to he, Tulsa. I was, I was <laughs> no, no, no. I'm sure he would love to go. He's uh, <laughs> Tulsa's covered, a little far. He's covering her from his couch. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Understandable. Mm -hmm. All right. I think All right. that wraps things up for today. Uh, we did not uh, so get in our Triumph NIL read. So let's no, go ahead and throw this in it. at the end because we didn't take a break. Yeah. So yeah. Is, um, tech sideline partner Triumph NIL. NIL for good. Triumph NIL is a unique and experienced sports marketing agency specializing in building custom name, image, and likeness partnerships for student athletes with members of the business community and fans. Their motto, I, I, I got to say, I love their motto. It just makes sense. <laughs> Recruit, retain, reward. We were talking about that in Greensboro, uh, how, how great their motto is. Visit triumphnil.com to learn more. We'll tease it. Coming up later today, uh, we're recording a Triumph Spotlight with Elizabeth Kitley, your two-time ACC Player of the Year. So be on the lookout for that. That'll do it for episode 288 of the Tech Sideline Podcast. Again, brought to you by First Bank and Trust Company and Triumph NIL. Thanks for watching and listening. Don't forget to like and subscribe on YouTube. And we'll see you next time for more Tech Sideline action.